Now you can crucify me if you want. I don't give a damn anymore. It's time for people to start speaking out with nuance and speaking out on the principles they stand for. That's all I'll say. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the re-report. Uh, thank you guys for taking this time to hear me out today. Uh, of course, we know a lot of, we know everything that our people are going through right now in this world um, with this so-called anti-Semitism. We know everything Kyrie is going through, everything Ye is going through. And one of the things that we've been highlighting over the past few weeks, days or whatever is the lack of, um, lack of support that our people uh, give one another, especially our people in high power and, you know, the support from other, yeah, like I said, other people in, in power and, and, and in position to help them instead of just, you know, always throwing our people away when someone else tells us to throw them away, when having other people make decisions for uh, things that uh, we should be policing in our own community. We know what's been going on with that. Um, and one of the things, like I said, one of the things we've been talking about is is holding our people who have this influence uh, and uh, holding them accountable for um, their lack of support. And of course, everyone has been reacting to Jay Williams' um, take on this situation. And that's something I wanted to react to as well, because he has he, he seems like a guy that's fed up like a lot of us are. Uh, he seems like a guy, you know, that's just like, he, he sees what's happening. He sees how Kyrie is being crucified. If you saw the video I did yesterday uh, about Jalen Rose looking like a hostage um, on first take, I mean, not first take, but on uh, the NBA show uh, on ESPN. We, we also talked a little bit about how Jay Will was on uh, first take as well. And he was talking about you know, why isn't Amazon being held accountable and things like that. And people just brush that right off. Like that's nothing to discuss. Like we don't have to go into that at all. They're just brushing that away. They'll say it. And like Molly did, she said, oh yeah, I hear you, blah, 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 whatever. But we want to make sure that anything being compared to Hitler or whatever, she went off on this whole, you know, Molly just yabba, yabba, yabba. And she just said, all right, Stephen, I want to get you in here. And, and they just brushed that off as, as if that's not a big deal at all. I hear you, but let's just move on. But anyway, I want to react to Jay Will's, um, his Instagram uh, post. I think it was today. A lot of people have been reacting to it. And I, I came across it as well and decided to just give my take on the things that he's saying in this video. So let's uh, hear what he has to say. Every day of my life, I approach it with a state of empathy, right? Regardless of what color, what creed, what race you are, I look at people as human beings. I think that's important. But life is always about taking a stand and holding principles. So I want to explain what I feel like my stance is as a black male in this world, okay? And conversations that I've had with my brothers and sisters in the black community. And I want you guys to empathize with it and hear me on it. So when I hear what Kyrie Irving has to go through in order to be reinstated, I'm appalled. I'm appalled. And let me give you examples of how I feel like we don't have the same energy and hold other people who have dealt with racial tropes accountable. So when Sarah Silverman does blackface or when Don Imus says nappy headed hoes, or when Howard Stern calls somebody the N-word in the skit, or when Brett Favre takes money from the state of Mississippi, we don't ask them to get sensitivity training. We don't ask them to donate. Exactly, we, we, we don't hold, we don't ask these people to do any of these things. It's like those things, like the Brett Favre, let's take that, that's more recent. It's just been completely swept under the rug. The point is, they're not talking about it. It's nothing that's being discussed. It's nothing that it's to be cared about. But we're, we're talking about Kyrie Irving, who posted a link to a tweet 
And we're talking about Ime Doku, who um, had a consensual relationship. Dead wrong for what he did, and, but so is the woman. But it seems that these two, and we're talking about sports, and also we can loop Kanye in there. But you know, let's just leave Kanye, let's leave Ye out of it, and let's put uh, Ime and Kyrie. It seems that these two are being crucified. Meanwhile, you have Robert Sarver and Brett Favre who just completely get the ride underneath the radar. And also, uh, what's the owner of the Washington Commanders? Um, Dan Snyder, for all the things that he's done. And that's probably a story we're gonna be covering soon too. But they get the ride under the radar and no one is asking them to meet with leaders or anything in the black community. They just get to do these things and they get to just escape as if nothing, as if whatever, they're black people, nobody cares. Anyway, let's continue to play it. to donate $500,000. We don't ask them to meet with the Black National Caucus. They apologize. And then you know what? The rest of the world moves on. But what I feel like is happening here, and that's how in the black community, like we've been told that's how the process works, right? Think about that, Britt. That's how the process works. Oh, somebody does a black face. Oh, it was a misunderstanding. We got it. Okay. You know, is that person really racist? Probably not. Was it ignorant? Probably so. Okay. We understand it. We move forward. We don't like it. We would love to hold them accountable. But society and having a lot of black people in positions of power, we don't have the governability to do that. But what we feel like happens with Kyrie is even after an apology, it's not enough. Not enough. It, it's not enough. We, we asked for an apology. They got the apology. Well, they asked for an apology and they got it. They sent, they asked for money. He gave the money. They gave it back. And it's like the nerve of you people. Me talking to them. The nerve of you people. If they can sit up there and, and, and what they're showing you is seriously, like I said, it's a modern day lynching. It is a straight modern day lynching that they are able to write out these terroristic demands, six demands, and nobody's saying anything. Nobody's saying anything as if it's like, we, like I said, all this money, but completely powerless. All of this influ influence for the wrong reason, completely powerless. You can call our women a nappy headed hoe and nobody asks you to take a sensitivity class. Nobody asks you to meet with the black leaders of our community. We feel like there needs to be more. And a lot of people I've spoken to over the last couple of days talk about this thing, older mentors of mine talk about buck breaking. And so we talk about tropes. This is something that we feel like in the black community that happened way back in the day where if there was a slave that was defiant, right? He got broken in front of everybody in order to show that he was not in a position of power. And that at the end of the day, he had to do what he was told to do because that's what was mandated of him. Like I said, they don't need slavery as you once knew it, as you learned in school about the whipping and, and things like that. They don't need that anymore. They, it, it, it doesn't matter to them. They, they, they don't need that form of slavery to keep you in bondage. They have a modern day of doing things to where you don't need to where a lot of our people don't even realize what's happening. This is a prime example of a whipping, a lynching, and all the other slaves, other NBA players are just standing back and taking and just watching this happen to this brother. Not all, but a lot of them who are just watching this. All of these people with all this money, but no power behind it. They're just watching Kyrie being whipped. But they come out and claim to be for our people soon as something is as uh, what happened in 2020 happened. But you see what happens when, when a real test comes for them to stand up and uh, band together.
You see where their true faith lies, where, where their true spirit lie. Buck breaking. Slavery, as you learn, it, 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 it was never going to last forever. It was always going to get to a point to where um, we were going to have this form of modern day slavery. They didn't need it anymore. And this is a clear example. We, we're not experiencing, we're not going through what our, we're not going through a worse situation what, of what our ancestors went through. But these, but it just goes to show you how much times, you know, how much things haven't really changed. It just goes to show like not not much has changed we're in a worse position now in terms of what we allowed to happen to us than what we were back then i guarantee you our people back in the 60s and 50s and all that way happier than us than what we are now way happier and there's a bigger situation going on what's happening with kyrie Irving? if the nets don't want him to be there just say you don't want him to be there but we should hold everybody accountable even owners of teams accountable with things that are happening in other countries, i.e. China and Uyghurs and the Muslim genocide that is occurring that we hear Ennis Cantor talk about. But we don't keep the same energy for everybody. We pick and choose what conversational points we want to make more polarizing. And I might lose my job. I might lose deal opportunities in the future for speaking out about even the platforms that continue to promote and profit a movie that is considered anti-Semitic. And that, and that was my whole thing. You know, in the beginning, I've, I've grown up after high school. I wanted to work at ESPN. I wanted to work at Fox. I've worked at a few, I've worked at a few news stations, but once I saw how much my words would be uh, suppressed and how I couldn't say what I wanted to say, I realized that just wasn't for me. And I would never have a peace of mind if I allowed myself to be on television, come and giving you information, uh, giving you uh, opinions about things that I really didn't believe. I just couldn't allow myself to stay there, to do these things anymore. Because I knew I wouldn't be happy, no matter how much money I would have made, whatever the most high's will would have been. Well, this is the most high's will right here. But whatever, I wouldn't have been happy. I wouldn't have been happy. I would have been miserable every day. I would have never been happy had I took had I stayed on that route. And I see I see what Jay Will is saying. No, I was never where he was, but me personally, I know I could have gotten there. I know I could have gotten there. But anyway, let's continue. It's almost done. To billions of people, they don't have to be accountable. Who is accountable? But we're gonna put everything on the shoulders of Kyrie Irving, who, even though he said I cannot be anti-Semitic, because if I know where I came from, stating that he's one of the four lost tribes. He's saying that blacks and Jews come from the same entity, the same thing. But we don't want to understand nuance. We want to be triggered by words. And we like fire. And we like things that are, you know, going viral on social media and everybody has some kind of hot take and we're calling people idiots and we're calling people names. Cause exactly, exactly what I said uh, a couple videos ago. Charles Barkley, Shaq, calling Kyrie Irving an idiot. Just calling names, not breaking down how he's an idiot, what he do to be an idiot, just talking about a link that he posted. Can just throw, can completely disrespect this man and just say, oh, he's now we have to answer for what this idiot has done. Are you serious, Shaq? Explain to me what he's done. Explain to me what Kyrie Irving did. Break down the documentary. Before you go casting stones and judging Kyrie Irving and giving a take, go watch the documentary. And then write down everything that you agree with and disagree with. And, and talk about it. Don't just go out there calling people names without knowing, without, you know, just to please somebody. Because it shows the, the level of ignorance that you're dealing with and the stupidity that you're dealing with and the fear that you're dealing with. When you just go resort to name calling because you don't have, because you are scared, you, you're basically scared that probably probably watch the documentary, you're just scared to stand on their own. Because that's, that's what we do. We just destroy each other. I ain't gonna destroy each other, man. 
I'm not gonna do that. Is Kyrie Irving anti-Semitic? Hell no. Could he have gone about it maybe a different way? That's what I would have advised him to do. But I'm not gonna let you guys sit out here and make this dude out to be like he is a villain, like he is a bad person. He is looking to explore his heritage. Now you can crucify me if you want. I don't give a damn anymore. It's time for people to start speaking out with nuance and speaking out on the principles they stand for. That's all I'll say. Exactly. And that's the end of that. But it's time for people to start speak, like, you know, standing on what they stand for, standing on it. Jay Will is the prime example on what I was talking about, man. It's uncomfortable when you got to be on these national syndicated shows. When these topics come up, you got to sit there in fear and really script out what you about to say because you're afraid of some backlash by giving your opinion. That's not a way to live. When you got you got this woman up there leading the charge and they're just waiting to trap you into some sort of to some to, to whatever you say, hoping you a lot of people hoping you say something to get you kicked off or thrown off or whatever the case may be. And you got to put your head down and, and be quiet when someone else is talking out of fear. You standing there just hoping they don't say something that'll get you in trouble. That, that Jalen Rose video yesterday was disturbing that I saw. It didn't happen yesterday, but that was the first time I saw it. That was disturbing watching that man sit there standing in front of that camera reading off that prompter like a prompter, prompter, teleprompter, like a hostage. And then seeing the clip of um, Jay Will and Stephen A, I think Amari Stoudemire and JJ Reddick in the, on the first take set, just looking as nervous and scared as they can be. How do y'all live with yourselves like that? And Jay Will, I just appreciate this take, man. It's tough. You know, every man has his breaking point. It's tough. But uh, yeah, this is a great take by Jay Will. Uh, hopefully a lot more of our people continue to step out and speak out. Uh, I will not be the guy, you know, someone who I've been critical of speak out and they standing on uh, true belief. I will not be the guy to say, oh, now all of a sudden you want to speak out. If they doing it and you see the consistency, I'm going to look at him and say, thank you, my brother. They don't ever have to talk to me or be friends with me. But I'm going to tell the truth about them. A lot of people always come in with, oh, you criticizing LeBron and you blah, blah, blah. You putting these people down. Like, no, I'm telling the truth about these people. I'm telling the truth. And that's what I will continue to do. So I appreciate y'all for hearing me out. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.